Hey guys, Michael with Melee Marine, and today we're going to be working on the Skeeter FXR21. Uh, we got a lot of things we're going to be installing. So we got a Mega Live, we got an Ionic 12 volt 125, we got a Dakota 3660, we got a Miller Tech 3615 charger, and a powerhouse DC to DC charger. Uh, kind of a mismatch of brands, but all these brands provide good parts at a good reasonable price. I think this is a really good setup. You could switch out the 36 for some other brands, but this is really good. I'm, I'm really excited about this. This is a really beautiful boat. Me and Christian are gonna be working on this today. We're gonna be pulling, obviously we gotta pull all the batteries out. We gotta check out what's going on back there to get the charger mounted. The Mega Live, what I like to do when installing Mega Live, when applicable, when able to, any live sonar. I like to wire direct to the unit. I don't really like going through a hub, um, especially, uh, especially hummingbird hubs. They're, they're trash, they're garbage. So when I can, I like to wire direct. Uh, this guy does have a hub. He doesn't need a hub from my understanding, but we got a, a network hub back, a network park right here. We're gonna use it. So that's the game plan. What's super cool, Christian, come around over here is, uh, I asked the guy, I said, hey, how'd you hear about us? He said, our website. Well, this right here, this guy right here is our, uh, if I can loosen it, is an OG Mealy Marine mount. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. That's pretty freaking cool. Just like a, I call them, you find them in the wild. This is a wild, this is a wild caught one. Like it's just there, which is pretty cool. Super, super cool. So I'm going to shut up. Um, we'll see how the camera camera edge goes. We might do some time lapse. We might not. So okay, bye. Let's go. Uh, let's go over here. Let's see if we can find somebody. That's a wild animal. He's uh, he doesn't like to be startled or scared. So we got to approach quietly and not from the back. But we need to be coming from the side and forwards, or else we could get yelled. So let's walk this way. You want to say hi to the camera, to 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 your faithful YouTube subscribers. How's everybody doing? Well, it's been uh, it's been an eventful 2024 uh, in many ways, and uh, you know we just got to count our blessings. And um, sometimes we we don't do that, but one of the reasons why it's been a tough year is that I was diagnosed with cancer in the uh, early part of January and I have to have surgery and then radiation treatment and uh, dealing with all that and I can assure you that uh, I had some of the best people that I believe in the world helping me and working with me on this. I can't, cannot thank them enough. They were an awesome team and uh, I do believe that I would not be standing here right now if it hadn't been for such an awesome group of people that uh, that worked with me and helped me through this. I can't thank Dr. Barnes enough, and uh, especially all the staff at the radiology place. They were absolutely awesome. It made a very difficult process for me uh, as easy as possible. So uh, fortunately, we got over that. One piece of advice to each and everybody: if you believe you have a problem, go see a doctor. This is the second time I've been diagnosed with cancer. My first time was at the age of 50. Uh, I'm 66 now and I got very fortunate, I caught both of them extremely early and if you have a cancer situation, that is the way to do it. But we also had uh, a little hurricane and so uh, I don't know about this hurricane, it was supposed to miss us, didn't miss us and then we kind of got a direct hit. We had some damage at the house uh, but we were fortunate that we never lost power which absolutely amazed us because usually if the wind blows hard, we lose power. So it's one of those stupid things, you know, category one plus a hurricane could come through and we kept power pretty much through the entire time. Uh, we had some issues at the house, but nothing major. But where my other job, where the uh, race cars are kept, that did not fare so well. And so uh, we lost uh, our garage down there and 
so we end up having to move the cars up here and I can't find Michael, Christian and Kyla. I might have got that all screwed up but if I did I apologise. These guys that work for them, they were absolutely awesome, came down over the weekend and helped me move the cars. But unfortunately these cars are not easy to move uh, but they got the job done or we got the job done. I think we went backwards and forwards five times, I can't remember. But the cars are here and safe, we're drying them out. Uh, they got a little bit wetter than I would have liked, but they are meant to race in the rain, so I don't think it's the end of the world. Obviously, we're gonna have to pull all the covers off uh, and give them a good clean up and a, a discount door check. And as you can see, we have the, you know, the doors open and fans running and circulating the air. Uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, they seem to have fared with a uh, little or no issues but uh, we've got all three of them here so this is we call this one Miss Texas this one is the gas monkey car uh, that car was the last one to be built uh, pretty famous car this one here I believe this one would Daytona I don't remember but it doesn't really make a difference so this is my other job when I'm not helping Michael uh, over here we have all the not all of the but a tremendous amount of the support equipment that's needed for those cars and so we've been drying that out today I think overall we did fairly well uh, some of that got a little wetter than we would like and we we're messing with the uh, boxes and stuff so it's been an interesting year and I think Michael has done an awesome job um, I, I guess I, I want to give a shout out to a couple of guys uh, Brian Robinson for checking on me uh, when I was dealing with my cancer, it was absolutely awesome. The guy got in touch with me and checked on me and, and was very um, uplifting. Uh, obviously, you know, a former NFL player and, and uh, just kind of gave me that boost that I needed to kind of like, hey, let's get this together. Come on, let's get going. Uh, the other one is Ben Milliken. He was also very, very awesome checking on me and we chatted and we spoke for quite a while. Two awesome people. Michael and his crew have been churning out boats. I've been very impressed with what they've been doing, the quality work they've been putting out. And even though I've not been here, uh, they, have, they have been keeping it where it needs to be because they know that uh, I'll hold them accountable. So uh, one last thing, I, and this is a little bit of a gripe. I'm a little bit amazed that uh, how some people react uh, that may not be in Texas uh, but we had a couple of disgruntled customers that uh, basically either didn't know didn't care or wasn't bothered that we had just gone through this hurricane and we didn't have power I don't know how many days we were without power here we were without power here at the shop for four days Michael was out power at the house I think for five days uh, we were blessed uh, we did we had power but we had some other issues out of the house we lost a lot of very big live oak trees that kind of stuff but what I'm trying to say is I think that you know try to think of other people you may not know what's going on in their life and so um, I know this video has probably gone on too long Michael's over there going oh my god I wish you'd shut up uh, but we are thankful I'm thankful for the business you give my son I'm thankful for the opportunity you give to him and it's able to keep his employees busy. I'm also thankful for them for coming and helping me. It was not easy. It was a lot of very, very hard work. And uh, I, I don't know what the temperature is here in Houston right now. It's got to be in the 100 degrees and 100% and humidity. So uh, thank everybody. And uh, please, if you do need anything, check out the website check out uh, you know, if you're in the Houston area or surrounding area and you need your boat worked on please give him some work he sure could use it uh, and so uh, I ask that ask that of you and uh, you know, if, if you guys want to know anything about my cancer situation make the comments down below and I'll fill you in but it, I think it's something that should be talked about because guys don't get this don't get checked out and then you have big problems so uh, with that, God bless each and every one of you, and, and thank you for watching this video. All right, guys, so we just uh, finished up this Skeeter here with the Mega Live install. Looking super clean, right? Um, that only took us, I don't know, three, four hours. Install Mega Live, uh, switch out the batteries, install some chargers, in and out real quick. 
a uh, couple things. In the beginning of the video, I said that the we were going to plug the Mega Live directly into the back of the Solix 12. Uh, probably everybody was going, "You're an idiot." There's only one network hub, network port back there. So we did have to run the Ethernet all the way to the console to the Ethernet hub that's up underneath it. So Christian went ahead and did that. I don't know if he's really going to be able to get it, but that's what we did. Um, here in the back, so we got. You're not going to be able to see very much, but we got the Ionic 12 volt 125 right there. Uh, it is being charged off this Precision, which is set to AGM mode. Uh, if your charger does not have a lithium setting, it needs to be on AGM. Uh, so that'll charge that battery up to about 98, 99%. It won't get it over to 100%. Uh, then we have a powerhouse DC to DC charger. So what that allows it to do is since we have two banks, we have two banks of that charger, which gives us 30 amps, two banks of that. Uh, once that battery gets up to a certain voltage over 13 something, uh, it'll turn the DC to DC on and it'll start charging his Dakota 3660, which is right here. Super cool little thing. So like I said, we got the Dakota right here. And then right here we have the Miller Tech 3615 charger. And that is a just in case charger uh, if the DC DC goes down or whatever. What's also super cool about the powerhouse DC DC is it'll charge off his alternator. So as he's running down the lake, once that battery is topped off, his alternator will charge the 3660. Um, we got everything plugged in, getting everything charged up, ready to go. Um, fairly simple install, very clean install. So we're shipping a lot of things out today. Big Dog Christian is getting a bunch of things shipped. He helped run the wiring. Uh, Kyler is getting other boats ready. We're gonna kinda go talk about those real quick. Um, but let's hop out here. All right, so we got this motor out here on the tank. We got a couple issues. First issue is um, it won't, it won't uh, get up on pad. It dies when you give it gas. Um, so first thing, we, last week what we did is we pumped the bulb and we heard it sucking air from up underneath the console. We found that the fitting was broken, uh, the barb. So we went ahead and replaced the fitting and now we're just running an auxiliary hose over the top, like a, like a spare hose directly into the fuel pump right here. So confirmed that we are not sucking air from the tank anymore. We started it this morning, it idles a lot better than it did. But when I rev it right here at the carbs, it just falls flat on its face. It just goes bloop, you know, just die. Um, so we recommend a carb clean. We also have an issue. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Our trims. Our trim is basically done. Uh, he has a leaking seal, which we told him about. If you're gonna go through and like this, that's bad fluid. There's water in there. Uh, if it's this point, you just go ahead and replace everything. Get it all, all the seals redone, rebuilt. Um, new fluid, all that, and this is a very labor-intensive process. This is not easy. This is one of the hardest things we do. Bleeding trim sucks. So that's it for today's video, guys. We got that Skeeter done up. I want you guys to check back tomorrow. We might be working on the old Kenner here. We got a couple other boats, but pretty much every day, I'm gonna show you guys what we're working on in regards to one boat. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, and share. Comment down below what you guys think of our install. I know you didn't really get to see much of it, but I hope you like it, and uh, check back tomorrow. Until next time, bye.